How's everybody doing? It's been a long day, I know. Okay, so the topic of my presentation, I'm going to be very off the cuff just because that's the way I like to present. And if you guys have any questions or want to stop midway, totally feel free to. I like interacting. It's more fun. And frankly, I think you'll get more out of it. So just quickly about me. Um, I'm actually product manager of the web analytics tools and the marketing analytics tools at Zappos. I also um, do a strategy right up to the CXO level. So I am kind of that weird bridge where I work on the tools themselves, but I also help devise the strategies. And on top of it, I actually have an engineering background as well. So I actually help with the designs of some of the tools. So it's kind of a weird one-stop shop. But that's kind of how I got here. So who here knows Zappos and who here doesn't? I don't expect it to be that well-known in Canada. Okay, so Zappos is one of the larger e-commerce retailers in the world. Um, we are still number one online for shoes. Um, and in 2000, I'm going to get the date wrong. In 2006, I think it was, 2007, we were acquired by Amazon. Um, so we're actually part of the Amazon family of companies. But we're allowed to operate as a completely independently owned company. So what makes... Zappos really unique is we put service first and foremost. Um, we are a customer-oriented company, and we don't just say that. We mean it. Um, the data we collect, everything we do is about providing the best service possible for our companies. So we don't say we're like a shoe retailer. We don't say we're a clothing retailer. We happen to be a service company that just happens to sell stuff. Um, the idea of having a Zappos airline, hence the picture, is not out of the question. Um, so this is the way we think about it. We don't think about it as selling things. We think about it as providing a service to our customers. So we went from being service, there's more people, we went from being a service driven company to taking it to the whole next level um, to delivering happiness to our customers. Um, Tony wrote a book about it, if you guys know Tony Shea, called Delivering Happiness, and it's now very much the company motto. And it's all about making people have that experience. I mean, we all shop and we all go online, we all have these things that are experiences. It's not about buying the thing, it's about the way you feel when you do it. And it's about making sure that people feel good all the time. So, where does that tie in with numbers? Well, numbers with a purpose. First is kind of an obvious little metric. We have 25 million customers. That's a lot of customers for an e-commerce site. But when somebody calls in, the average wait time in Q4 of last year for somebody to respond was 18 seconds. And that's during peak season. We always put our customer first. And we track these metrics like a hawk for exactly that reason. If that number goes up beyond like even one minute at Christmas time, there's an email out to the entire company for anybody and everybody to get on the phones. Everybody's phone ready. CEOs, CFOs are all able to jump on the phone at any time and take a customer's call. And that's the way we're all trained. It's actually required training that everybody be capable of taking calls within the company. So, and then more interestingly is that in that same time frame, we've seen a massive increase in interactions on Facebook and Twitter. And that's something we've all seen. It's just been the nature of the business we're all in, that more people are using it. Where this is interesting from a customer perspective is, do we want them just to like us, or do we want to interact with them? Uh, we actually have a team of people that just sit there and look for people posting stuff on Facebook and Twitter and responding to them live. So it's not like a day later, somebody's seeing a post, and we're getting back to them right then. If there's a complaint, we're handling it right there. And so we track all those metrics. So how did we get to that point? This is going to be a bit of a story, and this is where it is a bit of a use case. I'll just blow through it quickly. First, the base is the data, but is it the right data? Next, do you have all the right people in place? Do you have the executive support for any strategy? And finally, do you have the tech and tools? I just brought this all up quickly because here's the story. One year ago, I'd argue Zappos was not a data-driven organization. We had all the data in the world. We had terabytes of data. We, like everybody else, we collect tons of data all the time. But it wasn't organized in such a way we didn't ha really have an organization in place, and nobody was really thinking about it in terms of how do you really take this data and make our customers happier, increase the business performance, top line and bottom line. So what happened was about, well, I'll start at the beginning, 2011, anybody here remember Zappos having a bit of a data breach? Um, so that resulted in a lot of us to really examine the business. I mean, obviously, there are repercussions or impacts. Our retention rates had issues. Acquisition rates had issues. But what was really interesting is when we started looking at the data, back even before the breach, there were already underlying issues that actually had not been uncovered yet. We just happened to be really looking at the data for the first time ever as a collective group. So that goes into do you have the right data to make the decisions? Google Analytics, all the tools out there will, for an e-commerce site will all talk about visits, conversion rates, unique visitors. I mean, then if you get into the inventory management stuff, inventory turns. These are all standard metrics. 
but are they the right metric for your business? You know what? Because I don't think until you have the other two in place that you can actually build it or, or even make the right decision to know what the tool is. I'm not going to say it's the last thing. This is all iterative. Um, I'll admit that this is, I could have put this in almost any order except for the bottom two. The top two could go next. The reason I put tech and tools last was we finally actually do have the, we have the bottom three now and we're still developing the tech and the tools. We're actually doing it all in-house. That's our solution. And I would argue that the first set of tech and tools we made before we had actually really iterated were actually the wrong tech and tools. That the tech and tools is never kind of really finished. It's always going to be that last thing that's continually worked on. You could argue that. Um, that's just been my experience with it. Uh, in particular, with as you get new people and new insights and insert them, the tools always come after that again. I mean, you're always going to go back to it and make them better. But just our experience with it. So the really fun one is, do you have the right data? I mean, you can't even make the tech and tools until you have the data. Do you even have the right data? After the breach, about 10 of us were sequestered into a room for six months. That's even after the breach stuff was fixed. And we were told, we have a conversion rate issue. Our conversion rates have been trending down before then. And we had to figure out why. And then we had to figure out, well, how are we going to figure out why? I mean, and then we start asking the next question. Should we even be looking at conversion rate as a measure of our business? And that's where the KPI question comes in. And going back to the good to great quote, it's think about what is the economic denominator of your organization? What is the driving metric that can be used to measure how your organization is performing? And it's not to come up with one metric and say this is the end all and be all, the panacea, how we are going to define the org. It's that discussion. It's that process of discovery of getting your hands dirty in all this data that we have access to and figuring out what really defines our organization. For us, it could very well be interaction amount of time on the phones. I mean, we take pride in the fact that our longest phone call ever was eight hours, and that was a good thing. But our shortest phone calls were even faster if they went off. So you have to sit and think about why you're looking at the data you're looking at and what, what you're trying to achieve with it. My personal belief is that you don't look at the data to try to justify your existing KPIs. You must be looking at it with an open mind and open heart and really understand that you might have been doing things wrong. You might have been measuring your business incorrectly. We have so much new data and so many new ways to look at this stuff that we've never considered before. So the next one on top of that, to even to deal with that, it's like you have all the data, you have all these discussions, but do you have the right people to even act on this data now? Which I could actually take a step back and say, is the data actionable? But then do you even have the right people to act on it? In our case, we were just had a burgeoning uh, product management organization. Do these guys have the wherewithal to actually understand how the technology and how the business have to match up. I mean, once again, we're dealing with huge sets of data and we're dealing with a different mindset now. And so we had to really structure it from training classes to teaching people how to use basic tools like Excel and become Excel power users, which for a product manager historically, they're more UX oriented, not necessarily numbers driven. So you had to go from make that button blue to how do you formulate the proper AB test to determine whether it should be red, blue, green, or yellow? and then how you interpret those results afterwards for the business and present it all the way up to the CXOs. It's a different way of doing things now, and it begins to permeate every aspect of your organization. And then I talked about the actionability, but can your teams execute on the findings is even more than that. You could find the best, most perfect website in the world. Can you actually build it? Do you have the people to build that thing? Do you have to outsource the whole thing? And if you do, you better realize that you're giving away control of your data, and that's a problem. I mean, it goes back to the data breach thing. Do you really want somebody to have all that information? Next, the fun one, executive support. And this goes down to the idea that you might come up with ways of looking at the data that have never been done before. You might have to go to the executives of 10 years of your organization and say, guess what? You've been doing it wrong. Good luck with that one. <laughs> But it's an, it's an honest conversation, and it has to be had, but it has to be had in the context of data. It's not ego. It's not opinion. The opinion is there, but you have to really take the time and consideration to formulate in such a way that you're going to give a way for the company to go forward, as opposed to saying, we weren't, just weren't doing it right. We, I got a better way. And this was our experience. Finally, the tech and the tools. And the reason I, left, I, mean, the reason I kind of left it to the end is there's no point building it if the execs are going to just nix it right away. That's the reason I put the execs below the tech and the tools, because we've done that in the past as an org. We built all our in-house analytics tools, and there was one in particular we used for our marketing analytics and for our attribution model, and the execs just couldn't make heads or tails of the numbers that came out of it, so they just said, we don't trust it. That was the end of it. The tool was correct. The data that's coming out of it was correct. That didn't matter. 
because we could not explain it in such a way that they understood that they could make business decisions off it. And therefore, all that work was wasted. So getting them not just buy-in, not even just their support, but getting them involved in the process of the exploration of the tools, be it through simple reports or just, you know, my daily is walking up to the CTO and saying, check out the new column of data we have in this tool. Does this make sense to you? No? Okay, back to the drawing board. Standard dev iteration, but iteration on the data itself and which data you're using to make decisions. So it's kind of taking that software development mentality and applying it to both the business and the data side of things. So I guess one last thing I just want to say is that it really was a process of discovery for us. It wasn't an easy one. It was actually a really painful one and a lot of debates about exactly the things like why we're doing things the way we're doing. Should we change the way we're things we're doing? Whether the data that we're looking at was even valid. And how do you validate something like site traffic data, no matter what the tool is? You have no point of reference. So it comes down to a certain leap of faith that the data you're looking at is correct at some point, And that you have to, as an organization, buy into that. If you don't, you're going to have troubles. And that goes to the executive support, but that's an organizational thing. You all have to buy into the fact that this data that we have is going to drive our decisions. And everything else is layered on top of that. I guess, thanks. Anybody have any questions?